Hey everyone, this is Yvonne again, and I hope that you've had a great morning and afternoon. Today, I just wanted to share uh, something that God placed in my heart uh, to express with you. Probably the last few weeks, probably the last four years, let me not lie to you. <laughs> I've been experiencing extreme spiritual warfare, and it's no joke. It's real. It comes with being born again in Jesus Christ. It comes with the territory it's not that it's never been there, but the moment that you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior and you say, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead on the third day. I believe that you gave me the gift of the Holy Spirit that now resides in me. He's not just floating around, <clears throat> but he lives within me, the Holy Spirit. That's a gift that Jesus Christ gave to every Christian, to every believer, by faith, you have received the Holy Spirit of the Lord. And that is a wonderful, well, his name is wonderful. Hallelujah. It's, uh, he's a counselor. He's going to guide you. He's going to help you. And in this moment in time, that's, he's my everything. Holy Spirit, thank you. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for leading me and guiding me. And thank you for what you're doing in every believer's life. Because without the Holy Spirit uh, receiving Christ, we, would, we wouldn't be able to survive. We wouldn't know what to do. We wouldn't be able to do a lot of things that we're, we're supposed to be doing. And there are a lot of things that the, the church is supposed to be doing that. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing that Holy Spirit breaking loose in my brothers and sisters very soon. That that overflowing that's supposed to let us loose and let us praise and let us worship and let us warfare, you know, because once we're living in that spirit, we don't have to be on the defense all the time. We don't have to be, you know, protecting ourselves from the arrows and from the darts of the enemy. The moment we receive Christ, the veil was taken off of my eyes and off of every believer to know that you have an adversary. The Lord wants to make it perfectly clear to you, there is a devil. Now again, I don't know if you believe in Christ or in God. You may call it bad luck. You may call it whatever. My faith, I call it the devil. And we recognize it. it is an entity. He lives. He's real. And he influences us to do negative things. He is the he is the voices that say, hey, you should do this or you shouldn't do this or, you know, don't even bother trying because you're never going to succeed. Spiritually speaking, that is the devil. Anything that encourages you to do wrong and anything that encourages you to give up or to lose faith or to lose hope, it's not good. It's not good. It's not it's not the light of the world. It's not. It's not good. And so I'm letting you know in this moment, the word that the Lord has placed in my heart to share with you guys is one that is very known. It's, uh, it's essential for us to know what we have to use in those moments where the warfare is manifesting and it's trying to take us out. Uh, there's always warfare going on in the spiritual realm. There's angels who are fighting. There are angels who are uh, fighting forces of darkness right now. Christ is constantly inter intercessing, is doing inter uh, interceding on behalf of humanity so that we don't receive uh, as much as the brunt or uh, judgment that maybe we do deserve when we when we mess up or we do things as a whole as a unit uh ephesians 6 verses 11 to 13 is something that i want to share with you guys at this moment uh for those of you who are aware of what i'm going to talk about at this time it has to do with spiritual warfare the moment you enter into you receive christ you enter into a, a battlefield why because you're blessed you receive the biggest gift and the biggest blessing that you can have, which is eternal salvation. You receive something that money, now, nor gold, nor silver can buy, nor the riches, nor your reputation. Nothing in this world can buy you the gift that comes only through Jesus Christ. And that is eternal salvation. And now you have an adversary who has made you his target. He wants to, mm, he wants to take you out. 
Not It's not even about you or me. It's about Jesus Christ now dwelling within you. You've accepted. You said, Jesus, come into my life. Make a difference. Get all the garbage out of me. I want to be a blessing unto others. I want to be blessed. And I want to bless you. I want to have my life straightened out. I don't know how long I have in this earth to live, but I want things to go right. And I want to, to live and fulfill my prophetic destiny, my purpose to humanity, whether it's for one person or for millions of people. I want to make a difference now, God. Enlighten me, enrich me, fill me with your word, fill me with your blessings so that I may continue this chain of grace around the world. And we all have something to give. And that is why the enemy is out to get you. He does not want you to walk with that hope and with that faith and with that word of, of strength. He wants you to believe that nothing is possible. You're always going to be focused on your problems, on your circumstances, on your adversary, on those darts and arrows, those punches, those whispering in your ears that you're never going to make it. If he can focus, if you can get ruin your whole day... That's okay with him. But his ultimate goal is to rip that faith out of you, take your soul, and bring it down into eternal condemnation, which is called the lake of fire with him. He wants your soul because he knows that if he takes your soul, it hurts God. It's all about God, Jesus Christ. And that's the storyline of humanity and the faith in God. I don't know why. There's some things we don't question. There's some things that I'm like, you know what? I don't understand everything, but I want to, I'm willing to believe some things by faith. Because believe me, I believe some things through faith in this, in this world. And they have led me to no good. And there's some things you may believe, you know, why do we believe things simply by who somebody is? Hey, he's made it. He has this, he has that. You have nothing. Why should I believe you? I'm going to believe him by faith. Well, God, why do we question God so much? He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the giver of life. He is the, the, he is the one and almighty God. Why do we question everything about him? I can't tell you why people suffer. I can't tell you why he decided to make, why he decided uh, for an angel to become fallen and to have evil come into him and to become Luc Lucifer, to become the devil that he is today, who is out there. God is permitting him to live. For some reason, God has not destroyed the devil. God is actually using the devil to get us on track, to live our live out our purposes. But only you have the choice to make. If you're going to use what the devil's meaning to hurt you, you have the power of Christ to convert his treachery, his wickedness towards you and stealing your faith and stealing your soul for something good, to use him as your stepping stone to do and fulfill your ultimate prophetic destiny, your purpose to be alive is always supposed to be something that glorifies God in heaven to help others to bring blessing unto others I'm willing to believe that because the Bible says so because Jesus Christ tells me so and it's not just making me feel better I see it working in my life day by day and I have to learn how to warfare at the time that's needed and God's telling me, you wouldn't have to defend yourself so much, Yvonne, if you're just living in your purpose, if you're just speaking the word, if you're speaking life over others, you're living on the offense already. You're no longer trying to, don't hit me, don't hurt me, don't think bad about me. Uh, I, I had this thought in my head, oh my God, if I was doing more of what the Lord has called me to do, I'm sure there would be less playground area in my mind for the enemy to take a little thought and a word and say, look what she said today. How could she be a follower of Christ? Why would you guys follow a woman who had this thought in her head? Look, everybody, look at what she was thinking. My God, you think that seems ridiculous, but mm -mm, the mind is fragile. He can take you out very quickly if you're not on the offense. And it's better to be on the offense than being on the defense. Now, what I'm going to speak to you in Ephesians 6 Verses 11 through 13 is just God warning Christians, telling them, look, 
you're going to be blessed, but you have to be aware that you have an adversary. Don't just think that, that you're going to be blessed all the time. You have to fight. You have to protect your salvation. Your salvation is the reason why you can flow like and, and be spread out like butter because of that salvation. You have to be ready to stand for your salvation. There's going to be so many ways that you'll be attacked. It's unbelievable what the devil will do just to discredit your salvation. Just to try to, if he can convince, he wants to convince everyone around you. Because he knows how much we, we, we respond to wanting to people to like us or to love us or to do this. But unfortunately, not everyone's going to love you and not everyone's going to be for you. And I've had to learn that the, the hard way, the rough way, the hurtful way. And I'm still dealing with, those, with that in my life because it's not easy to feel alone. It's not easy to not know what people really think about you or feel towards you. We all have this longing to be loved and to be wanted. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that when it comes down to being between the wall and the spade or the spade and the wall, you have to really walk by faith. And I'm willing to receive all the word of the Lord. I hope that you're willing to receive the word of the Lord. And if you have already received the word of the Lord, just know that what I'm telling you, it's for a reason. We're entering into a blessing period. We're entering into a breakthrough period. We're entering in something God has, it's been bubbling up in the heavens. And God wants each one of his children and his sons and his daughters to use what he has given to them. And to know it's time for you to live on the offense. It's time for you to live in what God has blessed you to do. Whether you're a doctor, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a janitor or a secretary, whether you're a preacher, a pastor, an evangelist, it's time for you to do it with the love of Christ. To want to be a blessing, to want to be better each day so that you can reflect the love of Christ through your skill, through your talent, through your God-given purpose. God wants you to stop doing it for the things of this world, for the treasures of this world, for the money of this world, and start doing it for what we were born to do. That's to love God first, put God first, and to love each other, and to help each other. Not to look at what we're not good at. Not to look at what we think I think you deserve or what I think I deserve. It's about walking in the love, in the anointing of Christ, no matter what you're doing. As long as you know you're doing it for Christ, he's not going to make you do it for something bad or negative. It's going to glorify him one way or another. It's going to glorify his love, his justice. And sometimes that can make you feel like you're on an island by yourself. You can feel like, like you're isolated or you're being ostracized for doing the right thing. And that's why he wants us to know, hey... Ephesians 6, 11 through 13. Again, if you have your Bibles, that's awesome. If not, uh, I'm going to start uh, going through these Bible verses because I think I'm running out of time. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. For our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. This is why you must take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand. What is it today? Today, on March the 30th of 2018, what is God making you take a stand in your life? In your life in particular, in your family, in, in whatever it is, in your job, in your community, in your society, in your nation. What is it that God is putting in your heart and saying, this is the way, the truth, and the life. This is not right. This is not doesn't represent God. And I know that there's another way. Why is this bothering me so much? What is it that he wants to bring out of you that can only come out of you? What is something that, that he is trying to outpour through you, but it's not coming out? Why is there, 
why is it that you know you were born for to do something, but it's just like it's stuck. There's something that's that's oh, it's pushing it down and saying, you know what? Don't even try. It's never gonna happen. What is it now, particularly in your life? What is happening in your community, in your nation, in your surrounding? What difference? Uh, what is it that you have? That's going to make a difference in that particular issue. What is, what gift, what talent, what skill that has God blessed you with that he wants to take it out of you and he wants you to bless others with in that particular conviction, in that particular situation that you're having so much warfare that's starting within you and it's, it's around you. There's something where God is saying, this is why you must take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day. And having prepared everything, take to take your stand. You have something to stand up for. You have something to give to this world that's going to glorify the Father in heaven through you. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is that God is calling you to do. I don't know what it is that's nudging at you in your family, at your job, whatever it is that you're doing. What is it that you know that it's in you? Like you have the power to make the difference today. You have the power and somehow something's stopping you. Something feels like it's just, it's not the right time. You're not prepared. It's, it's never, just like they say, you're never ready, really ready to have kids. When it's time to do the right thing, the time is always right now. It's never going to feel like perfect circumstances. It just feels like when it's starting to feel right, something else happens. And I'm a testimony of that. Every time I feel like I'm trying to wait on something, it just feels like God's like, I gave you what I needed to give you. I gave you forgiveness. I gave you redemption. I gave you liberation. I gave you my spirit my Holy Spirit. Ultimate deliverance is up to you. When are you ready to walk in that full armor of God? Stop living on the defense and stop walking on the offense. Stop, start doing what God has called you to do at your job. I'm not talking about anything harsh or anything violent that the, um, no what God calls you to do is never going to lead you to do violent acts it's not going to lead you to uh belittle anybody it's not going to lead you to to manipulate or harm people it's going to lead you to take out the best in others to make others stand up for what is right for what is righteous in the eyes of the Lord not becoming self-righteous but helping others get the best out of them out of them let them be set free through what God is convicting you to do. God wants you to do something awesome today or to get started today. Today is the only day, like I said, yesterday does not exist anymore. Anybody or anything that's trying to bring your past to your present, that ain't from God. My friends, that's the devil. The devil is the only one who's going to take your past and say your past is your past and that's who you are. That's what you'll always be. God says, you are born again. You have been set free. Your mind has been set free. And the moment you start to feel like chains are falling over you, oppression is stopping you from living in the fulfillment of your purpose. It's time for you to take your stand. It's time for you to declare the word of the Lord over your life. You have the armor of the Lord. You have the salvation of Jesus Christ. That is your armor. You have a voice. Use your voice. Whatever is trying to choke you from speaking up. It's better to die for what is right than to let the enemy just kill you. Paralyzed in a chair. Wondering if tomorrow you'll see daylight. When you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, that's what you feel like. You feel like a prisoner. You feel like you're trapped. When the moment you start doing what you were born to be doing, you feel free. You feel awesome. You feel liberated. You feel it doesn't matter what's going on around you. You're doing what you were meant to do. You're doing what you were meant to do. And that, 
my friend, is the best way to leave this earth is to live in your purpose, is to fulfill your destiny. It's to help others through the riches and the blessings of the Lord. Yes, the Lord wants to let us know we have an adversary and you need to learn how to protect yourself and to live on the offense.